Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator uh, based in the United Kingdom and um, I love making fancy folds and boxes and all sorts of things and sharing them with you. Um, so I really appreciate you joining in with me today. Um, obviously these are Stampin' Up! products so if you want to purchase them just pop along to the description bar below here. You'll find the links to my shop and the links to the individual products I've used. And today I'm using this lovely new bundle, um, Happiness Abounds, that's in the new annual catalogue. And it has these beautiful flowers. So you've got kind of anemones here and different roses. And this one's either, I think, probably an anemone as well um, but lovely little sprigs of flowers and some super sentiments um, and I'm a bit of a sucker for a, uh, one that's got a nice scent font particularly because I love this one best wishes happy birthday friend sending many thanks for all you do congratulations you could use it for all sorts of occasions so that's what I'm using um, it comes in a suite um, and first of all you've got dies that coordinate with the stamped images so you can die cut all of these images out with the dies and uh, they also die cut the images on the DSP and uh, the DSP is beautiful um, and I will quickly show you it's 12 by 12 and I haven't cut it down um, to show you because otherwise you will miss the kind of range they've got stuff if I just show you this piece here just an example you've got colors that go across the sort of color spectrum so if you cut it down you would miss out on that so here you go the beautiful hues of happiness paper here's the hues of happiness paper I've kept it as 12 by 12 because the variation across the page is absolutely beautiful and you wouldn't get that if I cut it down so you've got coastal cabana daffodil delight flirty flamingo fresh freesia gorgeous grape granny apple green mango melody melon mambo mossy meadow night of navy and pool party in there two sheets each of the six designs and I'm just going to turn each of those over for you as you can see big floral images and then a lovely rainbow on the reverse rainbow of small flowers with our lovely acrylic rainbow and the reverse a lovely night of navy with beautiful colours in there and the pool party coming through with the melamano shades of pink lovely brights on the reverse and then here the fresh freesia the gorgeous grape night of navy coastal cabana and pool party and there and then finally our roses pinks through to yellows and the same on the reverse so with the DSP then I have cut um, I've used some of the DSP here some of the large pieces to make this fun display fold card um, and I've seen an upright version of this I hadn't seen a landscape version and I just thought it worked really well with these flowers um, to kind of give that lovely display so you've got to, it fits in a standard envelope but when you open it out look at that it looks like a much bigger card and really does look lovely and you can either um, write your message in the centre there or you could put another piece of basic white on the back uh, if you wanted to write a longer message or you didn't want it to be on show um, but as you can see I've used that lovely trellis here to give us a peek through just a little bit of the DSP I'm a bit frugal with DSP and then I've just cut uh, two of each of the flowers to go on the front there and two of each of the, uh, the leaves which means that it's two passes through your uh, big shot or your cut and emboss to create the card um, so there we go um, i'm taking part in an insta blog hop in, in sorry an insta hop today so this is my video but all of the projects are linked on instagram so follow the links to my instagram account um, and then hop along and see all the other projects that we've got as well because there's some going to be i'm sure there'll be some fabulous projects so the color tones within the, the um the suite include the lovely sort of purples and the fresh freesia in particular so I thought I'd go with that, having gone with Melon Mambo. So we're going to, we, I've cut some of the pieces already um, just to, to help um, progress things. So to start off with, um, I have done this in inches as well. I will put the inches, well, all the dimensions below this YouTube video. They're also on my blog, um, so you can easily find them there. To start off with, then, you need a piece that is 24 by 10.5 centimetres. This card can be made if you've got a whole sheet of A4 
um, and then literally just one little kind of scrap less than a quarter um, of a piece of cardstock so I am starting I'm scoring and I'm scoring at two and a half on the right I'm just flipping that round I'm then going to score at five at 19 and at 21.5 so that's our card base we're then going to need uh, some pieces as in, in, for the layers which I will go through um, and we also need some mechanisms so for the mechanisms I, I need two pieces which is six and a half by seven and a half and I'm going to score on the short side at two and at 4.5 and I deliberately have kept those a little bit shorter because that will help tuck them in a little bit so you don't get them protruding too much on the side of your card so 2 and 4.5 again so okay uh, one thing we need to do on this um, uh, piece of card on the short side once you've scored it you need to cut from the bottom to the first score line, you're probably just a little bit out of shot there, but you're cutting from the top down to that first score line. Okay, and once you've done that, just come in with your snips and you're going to cut diagonally from the score line across, and I'm just flipping it over to make it easier, from the score line across. And if you haven't quite gone there, that just trims, okay? So that gives our pretty sort of effect here, just gives a, a, a nicer effect. And this is what I do, I use old cardstock to create my samples when I'm creating, um, so that to, I get the measurements right. And sometimes it means I do them in inches as well as uh, centimetres. Once you've done that, you want to reinforce those score lines. Like so. And then you're just going to that first one, fold it back on itself. So that's the first one coming out from the middle, I should say. There we go. So you're going to end up with a piece that's like this. Okay. Now our mechanisms, we're going to just fold those into a zigzag. Like so and do the same with the other one. And they're going to actually come out like that. So you're going to have one on each side with that kind of zigzag on there. So let's get on with our decoration. Um, for the, my centre panel then, I've got a piece which is uh, 13 and a half by 10 centimetres. And I want to die cut some of my flowers. So what I've done is I've just rough cut some of these already. I've already done one set, as you can see here. And just give you a couple of tips in terms of die cutting these. So what I find um, is easiest to do is actually if you cut some of these apart, because what you don't want to do is come in um, too close to your dies and overlap them so that's the first thing I would say so I will tend to just cut in like so and again you can see just cutting the white space between those shapes then with the dies you will find that there's always one bit which kind of is easy to line up and on this one you've got a little pointy bit so you see a little pointy bit here matches with this one down here and I just pop that I use that as my focus and then stick that down to keep it in place. And I do the same with all of those. Um, so with this one, I'm gonna use the stem at the bottom as my, as my place to kind of um, line up the leaves. Again, take the tape off so that you can see where it is and just put those in place. My other leaf is at the same here. And then this one I'm going to put in here as well. So 
So the first thing I'm going to do is die cut out these flowers. So it's one pass and you'll get a whole sort of set of those ready to go. As you can see here, so those have cut out really well. And there's very little waste on, on these. Um, so I'll just pop my dies to one side. Uh, one of the things I, I use sometimes um, is I have a little metal um, little magnetic dish, which is useful to pop the dies in when I'm doing quite a few. Or a piece of magnetic sheet is useful, just so that you don't accidentally scoop them up when you're doing things. And then the other, next thing I'm going to do, um, before I do, I'm going to actually, and I'll stamp it afterwards, I'm going to stamp it first. So I'm going to grab that lovely trellis and I'm just going to pop that just on the left hand side there, like so. And that can again, can just go straight through the die cutting machine as well. Now once I've done that, when you lift it off, most of those pieces will just ping out. Um, I look messy craft, you see. I will just do that. Obviously you could use your die brush. Um, I find I don't need to. But what I do is I just go through with this one and because some of these actually are, don't cut out, they are designed to just lift up. So by going from the back, either any uh, die cuts which haven't come out, I can pop out and just those ones that lift up I can give them a really good sort of push as well. So as I say hopefully you can see that kind of get a bit of dimension on the back there um, and that's why I sort of, you know that obviously will allow the colour to show through from the um, from the back as well and if all the pieces don't come out you know what it doesn't matter you can pop them through again if you want to um, I probably won't well I, in fact I definitely won't not for this anyway um, there we go so that's so these little ones I've just got a couple down here that I haven't quite poked out there we go and part of the reason is because I probably didn't clean my die out properly before I used it. But there we have it. Um, grab your stamping pierce mat before you do your stamping um, because we're going to be um, to photopolymer stamp set. I'm just going to use some gorgeous grape because um, I just think it needs something a little bit stronger than the fresh freesia for the sentiment. And I'm just going to line that up and I'm just using help using the grid lines to help line it up. Now if you made a mistake when you were doing that stamping, great thing is what you can always do is put a layer over it. So I would, you know, cut, cut a banner, do something like that um, to create your, um, to, to cover up uh, any, any mistakes. Okay, so this piece can pop in the centre, that's going to go in the centre of our card, actually, which it looks like, hmm, I may have, I may have put something correctly there. Yes, okay. So I didn't in fact cut this to ten and a half. You can see here, yeah, I've actually cut it to eleven and a half. So I'm just going to line it up at the one centimetre line, butt it up nicely, and cut that off the bottom. Okay. And oh look, <laughs> now now we have a layer that works. I'm going to use some Tombow for this, and I'm going to just come down this outside edge here. Um, and I'm going to put a little dab of Tombow in the centre of each of those sort of trellis areas along with a bit on the edge here before I go around the edge for the remainder and that'll just help keep it nice and flat as well. So there we have our layer. Now we're going to start putting our mechanisms on. Right, so the mechanism, this is actually going to go on the front of this before we put our panel on. Um, so I'm going to put some, so my zigzag, 
I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of that and that's going to sit just on the outside kind of edge of that piece of card. Okay. So again, so this one, the flap's coming out to the left. Put adhesive. Now if you wanted to use Seal Plus, you could. I tend to, I'm tending to use Tombow on this because I really want to get, make sure I've got a bit of wiggle room. So again, I'm lining that up with the bottom and just making sure the score line is just to the outside edge of that flap. Now I'm going to come in with my panel um, and this is seven centimetres wide by nine centimetres high. So it's just going to fit on the front there to where we cut this one off. So again, just put some adhesive down here and being Tombow, that's where that really helps. And with these, I'm going to very quickly just make sure those join in the middle to create my gatefold. So you want to make sure it's nice and square to the bottom of the card. So I'm using that bottom edge to line up. There we go. If you get a slight overlap, that's absolutely fine. If you want to trim it down, you can, but you're only talking about tiny, so you know, like half a millimetre. So there we go, there's our two panels. Now we're going to do our next two, our two front panels. These are five and a half wide by seven and a half high. And you'll see that I'm going to put the glue on the panel here. And again, I've deliberately kept it a bit short so that if you, you can just lay that on there and it'll fan out beautifully. But what it won't do is you won't get any of the, the mechanism sticking out as well. So again, And I'm just layering that and I'm just lining it up with the outside edge of my mechanism and making sure I've got a nice border there as well. Like so. And once you've done that, you can fold those out and flat and now you can add your layers of DSP. So with the DSP, I want these sort of purpley tones here. And in terms of height um, for that back one, I want these to be 8.5 centimetres high. So I'm just going to cut across this piece of DSP at eight and a half centimetres. So, and then the, I want them to be six and a half wide. So you'll see I've got my six and a half there and my six and a half there. So I'm going to put those to one side to each side where I'm going to use them and then those can go straight on. By doing that I find that um, I'm more likely to get them so that the, patch, the pattern matches. Yep. So as I say it's really quite frugal with the DSP. I know, DSPs for cutting and using, but you know, hey. And then I've got two pieces of basic white for the front here, and these are five by seven centimetres. So I want, I'm going to arrange them so to each side. I want one of each of my large flowers, a stem and a rose, a stem and a rose, and then two of my leaves for each one. And by making it a little bit smaller than usual, a little bit narrower, it gives me the chance to um, have these overhanging very slightly, like so. So I'm, it's only sort of like, probably, it probably is less than a quarter of an inch. Um, but it just, again, takes away some of those sort of sharp edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my outer flower and I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. So a dimensional in the back of each of those. Now you don't have to mirror these, you can make them as um, you know as as interesting as, as, as you as you wish. You can vary the colour of the flowers. Um, I just rather like this of you know me, I love purples and I love tone on tone. So just pop those again, not coming much over the width there. With the leaves, pop those in to kind of break up the 
edge of the flower. And then again, I'm, you can see I'm just bending those flowers very slightly to give them a little bit more dimension. And you can see some of that lovely colour on the back of those. Um, that DSP, the reverse there. I'm just going to pop again a little bit of Tombow in there. And then those panels are ready to go onto our finished card. So hardly hardly any stamping on these. Obviously when you've read DSP or if you're not keen on the DSP you can stamp and colour your own images as well. So you could have some beautifully shaded ones. Um, these are ones that have just been shaded with our blending brushes um, and then you could easily pop one of those on the inside of a card if you wanted to um, or you could stamp as well. But there we have our fun sort of, I don't know, display fold card? I guess it is. But whichever way, I think you'll agree, that would look lovely when it's on display. So do pop along in the Insta Hop and see what everybody else is doing. Hope you've enjoyed the project. And if you would like to purchase the lovely Hues of Happiness um, suite or the Happiness Abound stamp set and dies, just follow the links uh, below this video or on my blog. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, please click the subscribe button and click on that bell to get notified when I post a video. Bye now.